Ice cream! Grandpa, can we go out and get some ice cream? Oh, heavens no! Don't you kids know to never trust an ice cream truck? What? You're just being a cheap old man! We want ice cream! You kids need to learn. I've got just the book for this. Now let me go find it. Ah, yes, here we go. Mr. Scoopy's ice cream. After this, you kids won't want to go near ice cream trucks anymore. Now let's see, there's so many tales here. Let me find the right one. Ah, bingo! This one will work great. Gather around, kids. It's time for a story. This first story is written by Rotsoil, and by the time we're done, you kids will know not to mess with ice cream trucks. I never trusted ice cream trucks. Never liked them either, mostly because an ice cream truck playing music meant there was a horde of screeching kids close by. I used to loathe when the ice cream truck went by. The tinny sound of green sleeves filling the air. The sounds of kids giggling and running down the street after it. Then the song would be stuck in my head for hours after that. I loved when it finally got too cold for the ice cream man to come around. I never understood the appeal of it. Buying overpriced ice cream from a stranger in a truck. Maybe parents just went along with it to shut their kids up. I don't know. So you can imagine how I felt when I noticed an ice cream truck sitting at the end of my street. I was immediately filled with annoyance and confusion. I thought it was still too cold for ice cream. Didn't they start coming around closer to summer? I ground my teeth and braced myself, waiting for the music to start playing. It was like nails on a chalkboard for me. But it never came. I went to the front window and peeked through the blinds. It was just sitting there, parked. As far as I could tell, the truck wasn't running. I felt like one of those stereotypical old people, peeping out the window, glaring at the kids playing outside. But none of the kids were playing outside. I wasn't old and there was no one to glare at. It was a weird truck. The side read, Mr. Scoopy's Ice Cream in big red letters. I'd never heard of Mr. Scoopy's before, but maybe it was a new company. There was the disturbing mascot under the letters, too. It looked like a larger ice cream cone, eating a smaller, terrified one. Was this supposed to entice kids to spend their money here? I thought it was creepy. I watched as the kid who lived across the street, Noah, came out of the garage and sheepishly walked down the street towards the truck. I could see his dad laying on his back under a car. Isaac had recently started restoring classic cars. He was in the process of fixing up a red Camaro this time. Probably gave the kids some money so he'd get some peace. I'd seen him and his wife fighting through their windows. Heard them arguing in the garage, too, late at night. Pretty sure the whole neighborhood had heard them. I didn't care what their problems were or what they did in their free time. I was a no-nonsense, no-drama kind of guy. This was a quiet neighborhood when I moved here. Now everyone was having kids, and those kids were screaming and playing all the time and giving me headaches. And now the damn ice cream man was early for the season. I frowned as I watched Noah come back up the street. Head hung slightly. He retreated back in the garage. Not caring what the problem was, I humphed and went back to the couch to watch TV. I heard what the problem had been later that night, though. I had opened my windows to let the crisp breeze in as I got ready for bed. I liked having fresh air, and I liked the room cold when I slept. But the open windows clued me in on Isaac and his wife having a screaming match in their garage. She was yelling about him being a bad parent. A nearly absent father, 
and asked why he thought it was a great idea to let Noah have ice cream right before dinner. His reply was that it didn't matter. The truck had been empty anyway. Quite the comeback. But the truck was still in the same spot in the morning. It caught my eye when I went out for my morning paper. Maybe someone down the street got a job as an ice cream man, I thought and went about my day. A few hours later, I had just gotten settled on my couch and was ready to play the new Doom game when my dog, Bailey, interrupted. I'd rescued her when I first moved here. Thought it might be nice to have someone to share the house with. But here she was, interrupting my Saturday afternoon plans. She sat right in front of the TV with her leash in her mouth. She looked at me with those big puppy dog eyes that I just can't say no to. And that's how I found myself walking down the street towards the ice cream truck when that damn music started wailing. I stopped, immediately irritated and turned back towards the house when the leash in my hand pulled back. Bailey was standing there, refusing to budge. She barked and looked at me expectantly. All right, fine, I muttered. My voice was immediately drowned out by the music. I swear Bailey had an extra pep in her step as we continued our walk. I happened to glance through one of the windows of the truck as we walked by. The window in the back was open, but no one was in there as far as I could tell. No one was in the driver's seat either. We did one lap around the block, and when I found myself back in my front door, I realized the truck was still playing music, but hadn't moved from its spot at the curb. I was convinced the music was louder than it had been before. Swearing internally, I put Bailey inside and marched down to the house the truck was parked in front of. I banged on their door, the ice cream tune piercing my ears. A middle-aged couple opened the door and immediately clasped their hands over their ears. I started shouting to be heard over the noise, but it was pointless. They opened their door wider and I stepped inside. As soon as the door shut, the music was muffled, but it could still clearly be heard. If I lived in this house, I would be livid, and my anger gave way to sympathy. Can't you do anything about that truck? I pleaded. They both looked at me sympathetically. We tried, the husband said. We thought it belonged to someone else here, but when it was still here this morning, we checked in with all the neighbors. It doesn't belong to anyone here, and no one knows where it came from. We called to have it towed, and we called the police, but because it isn't an emergency, it's not a priority. We called hours ago, and they still haven't sent someone. So this isn't your truck? I asked. They both shook their heads. We haven't seen anyone inside it, or we would have asked them to move it. I thanked them and apologized for bothering them. As soon as they opened the door, we were all assaulted with the tinny music. I made my way back to my house, looking like an idiot with my hands over my ears. Once I was safely inside, I started unclipping the leash from Bailey, who waited patiently for me to come home. I was interrupted by a knock at my door, and Bailey immediately started barking. I opened it to find Isaac and let him in so we could talk better. Did you find out what the deal is with that truck? He asked, looking uncomfortable. No, why? Do you know anything? Something ain't right about that truck. Noah went to get ice cream yesterday, but he said no one was there. When I saw it was still there last night before bed, I went to look at it, but still no one was there. I already asked Randy. He said it's not his and he doesn't know who parked it in front of the house. They called the police to have it removed, so there's not much we can do but sit and wait, I said hoping Isaac would get the hint and leave. I didn't want any part of whatever nonsense this was. I just wanted to spend my Saturday with my dog, playing video games. Anne's kid is missing, Isaac whispered, 
Even though we were the only ones here, there was a serious look in his eyes. What? I asked. I'd never heard of a kid going missing here. She said her daughter went to get some ice cream. Must have been someone this morning, but she never came back. They were combing the neighborhood when the music started playing. Something wasn't adding up here, but I didn't know what it was. The truck is moving, I said as something caught my eye outside the window. Big letters spelling out, Mr. Scoopy's ice cream slowly passed by. We both ran to see it. The music was now playing at a much more acceptable volume, but the truck was stopped in the very middle of the road. The window was open, and I could see someone inside it now. Anyone want anything? A funny-looking man asked, leaning out the window. He was missing teeth, balding, and his ears were way too big. He looked small and frail, like he'd never seen the inside of a gym once in his life. Isaac's wife stood in their garage, watching the truck, a protective arm holding Noah in place. Other parents were starting to come out of their houses as well, but no children ran forward. No? Nothing? He chuckled, eyeing Noah. No ice cream for you, little boy? Isaac's wife tightened her hold on Noah, but Noah's eyes were wide with fear. The weird little man in the truck just shut the window and cut off the music, and the truck just sat there, parked in the middle of the street, until the music sounded again the next day. There was no sign or word from the cops. When the music started playing, I was on my way back home after another walk with Bailey. As soon as the window opened and the little man stuck his head out to address all of us, Bailey started growling at him. Bailey never growled. She would bark when people came to the door, but otherwise she was usually very quiet and sweet. Shut that dog up! The man shouted, glaring at us. Shh! I hushed her and put a hand on her back to quiet her. I could feel every muscle in her body was tight and tense. Now then, what will it be today? The man asked as everyone else on the street exited their houses. No one said a word, but I could tell everyone was uneasy. Hmm? Nothing again? The man called out again. Well, that's all right. But I won't be leaving until someone buys something. As the man leaned back into his ice cream truck and started to shut the window, a voice called out to him. Where's Wyatt? Where's my son? A tired looking woman carefully stepped closer to the truck. Hmm? What's that? The ice cream man asked, leaning back out. My... My son, he asked if he could get some ice cream, but he never came back. You would have been the last person he saw. Where is he? The woman called back, her voice shaking. My daughter's been missing since yesterday. Another woman called, presumably Anne. A couple of other cries joined theirs. I'm not here to talk about missing kids. I'm here to sell ice cream. The man laughed. Something about his laugh sent goosebumps crawling all over my skin. All, all right, I'll buy some, a voice called out. Was that my voice? I felt myself moving robotically towards the truck. Bailey whined beside me. Oh, what's that? The creepy little man leered at me from inside his truck. As I approached, I could see he was wearing an apron, which wasn't that uncommon. What was uncommon, though, was that the apron was one of the heavy rubber ones, not fabric, and the awful stench radiating from the truck, as well as the dark red pattern on his apron. 
I felt my blood turn to ice. Oh, I'll buy something, I gulped. If I buy something, you'll leave, right? It was like I wasn't in control anymore, and my body was just doing what it wanted. I never got in the middle of anything. I kept to myself, and that was how I liked it. So why did I feel the need to be a hero now? What will it be? The man asked, an eager look in his eyes. A vanilla cup, please. The giant ice cream cone painted on the side of the truck somehow looked even more menacing. I reached into my pocket for my wallet, and Bailey whined again next to me. She had a pleading look in her eye, and pulled the leash back toward the house. Here you are, sir. One vanilla cup with a cherry on top. I looked up to see he was holding a cup out to me. I took it with a shaking hand. It was filled with vanilla ice cream. There was something red and pulpy on top. As soon as I realized what it was, I dropped the cup and vomited all over the street and my shoes. Bailey finally tugged free and bolted back to the front yard to wait for me. The man slid the window shut, cackling. In seconds, the truck was rolling down the street, playing that wretched music. My vision spun, focused on the spilled cup of ice cream in the street. A small, bloody eye lay in the middle of the mess, staring back at me. The police showed up shortly after that. They took information about the missing children, and everyone on the street had similar reports about the ice cream truck and the man driving it. But no one remembered seeing a license plate. The police said they'd never heard of an ice cream company called Mr. Scoopy's Ice Cream. Now when I hear the twinkling sound of green sleeves being played as an ice cream truck drives by, it brings about entirely different feelings. Feelings of terror and dread. That story was so lame, Grandpa. It wasn't even real. What? Why, you little whippersnappers says right on the cover that these stories are true. Who would even make up a story like that? I guess if one wasn't enough to keep you kids away from the ice cream truck, then we need one more. Let's see here. Ah, yes, this one will work. This next story is written by... Ah, jeez. These kids with their internet names and their weird lingo. Written by EAPATBP, this next one will make sure you kids stay away from ice cream trucks forever. Get back inside, you idiots! Even with the windows and doors closed, I could still hear Mrs. Warshaw screaming from her kitchen window. The only other sound in the neighborhood was the sound of the ice cream truck that had been parked at the end of the street for the last hour or so. I had heard this chiming version of green sleeves play on a loop at least a few dozen times now, although it had only taken about three minutes before it got unbearably annoying. I normally would never be on the same page as Mrs. Warshaw, but I couldn't help but agree with her anger this time. I got up from the couch and walked over to the window, pulling back the curtains to look outside. Mrs. Warshaw was leaning out her kitchen window, looking down the road. I pressed my forehead against the glass to get a better view, but all I could see was a small crowd of people. What's going on? I looked over as my fiancé, Marco, walked into the room behind me. There's an ice cream truck out there, I said. He leaned over me to take a look out the window. Are people crowding around it? He asked. Looks like it. I don't think that's a good idea right now. 
he said, backing away and taking a seat on the couch as he turned the television on. I kept looking out the window as Greensleeves continued to play. You're all going to die! Mrs. Warshaw shouted. She glanced over towards our house and stared at me for a second, before looking back towards the growing crowd of people at the end of the street. Finally, I backed up from the window. If people were going to be stupid, that was on them. I joined Marco on the couch as he scrolled through some movies on Netflix, not really paying any attention. He began to hum softly and I sat there, listening until I noticed he was humming green sleeves. Really? Sorry, it's catchy. It's been playing for a while now. I guess it's stuck in my head, he replied. The music was distracting and unnecessarily loud. It almost sounded like it was getting louder each time it looped. I could hear the lyrics to the song in my head each time it played, over and over again. I hated this song. Hello, Earth to Chris. Marco waved his hand in front of my face. What? Are you okay? You blanked for a second there. I looked over at the TV. When did you put on a movie? I asked. Like, 15 minutes ago. I shook my head. Sorry, the music is so distracting. Why is the ice cream truck still out there? I got up and opened the front door. Stepping out into the porch and then walking out to the front lawn, I heard Marco's footsteps as he followed me out. I stopped at the edge of our lawn and looked towards the ice cream truck that was surrounded by the neighborhood kids and their parents. The truck itself looked old, and the white paint was chipping and dirty. It read, Mr. Scoopy's Ice Cream, in big red letters on the side, and included a giant vanilla ice cream cone as a mascot. It had big eyes and a wide open mouth, and it was eating a smaller vanilla ice cream cone that had a frightened look on its face. That's a bit morbid, Marco mumbled. I stared at the cartoon for a few seconds. He was right. It was a bit unsettling for an ice cream truck. How long does it take to get some damn ice cream? It seemed like everyone was trying to shove their way to the front of the crowd. And I noticed that some people already had ice cream. But they weren't going back inside. They were trying to get more of it. Oh, don't tell me you're going to get ice cream too! I looked over at Mrs. Warshaw, who had all but climbed out her window at this point. We're just looking, I said. She huffed, loud enough that I could hear. After a few minutes of standing out there, my head started to hurt from the awful twinkling music. I turned around to make my way back inside as Marco followed. Just as we were about to walk up the porch steps, a high-pitched child scream filled the neighborhood. We ran back towards the sidewalk to get a look at what was happening. A child had dropped their ice cream cone and it was now splattered on the road. The child continued to scream, not even stopping to take a breath as she reached for her blonde pigtails, first pulling the red ribbons off and then gripping her hair in her hands and pulling as she continued to scream. Her face turned bright red as her mom walked over and tried to get her hands off her hair. It was no use, however, and the girl kept screaming until she pulled out two giant chunks of hair and dropped them on the floor on top of her ice cream. She stopped screaming, but only for a second before she started up again and charged at another girl, grabbing her ice cream cone and throwing it off to the side where it landed on the nearest lawn. The second girl started to cry and ran towards the ice cream licking it off the grass. Off to the side, the girls' mothers had started fighting with one another. In the midst of all this, the rest of the people were still trying to get their ice cream, completely oblivious to the fighting that was happening around them. Soon enough, it seemed like everyone was fighting with one another. The ice cream was being thrown across the street and at other people as multiple fights broke out among the neighbors. Some people were kneeling on the floor, licking ice cream up from off the road, sidewalk, and the nearby lawns. 
We watched from our front lawn as people continued to fight. It was escalating by the second, and I watched as one kid bit another's arm, causing the second kid to scream. The first kid didn't let go, even as the second began punching him in the face over and over. I reached over and tapped Marco. Call the police! He ran back inside immediately and I stood there, frozen as my neighbors continued to brutally attack one another. People were punching, kicking, and biting each other. It even looked like some were biting off chunks of other people's skin. I was sure that by now a few people had some broken bones. They're on their way! Holy shit! I glanced over at Marco as he watched the crowd of people who were almost killing each other over ice cream. As all of this unfolded, the stupid song kept chiming on in the background, almost loud enough to drown the yelling and screaming. Suddenly the ice cream truck began to move, making its way down the street, towards us, and running over someone's leg as it passed. The music got louder, causing a pounding in my head as it rolled past us. I stared into the ice cream truck, trying to get a look at the driver although I wasn't able to really see much of them. They were wearing a red hoodie over a black baseball cap, hiding most of their face, and all I could see was one thin, frail-looking hand as it gripped the steering wheel. We watched the ice cream truck drive off down the street, the music slowly getting quieter and quieter, but never really fading completely. The truck turned left when it got to the end of the street, and once it was out of sight, I looked back towards the crowd of people. A few seemed to be dead on the road now, and I noticed that some of the people had begun to take notice of Marco and me, pointing towards us. We should go inside. I grabbed Marco's arm and we ran into the house, locking the door. As the crowd reached our house, they began banging on the windows and doors erratically. What the hell was in that ice cream? I shouted over the noise. Marco shook his head as he leaned against the front door. The pounding on the door and windows was making the walls shake around us. Suddenly, the sound of police sirens could be heard getting closer. I sighed in relief. The sirens got louder and closer, making me feel a bit safer, although not completely. For some reason, it wasn't loud enough to drown out green sleeves as it played in the distance. I found Grandpa's wallet! Ice cream! Ice cream! No, wait a second, when did you... Uh, Grandpa? Why does that truck say Mr. Scoopy's ice cream? Well, that's just not possible. Let me have a look. Oh, Lord! Close the blinds, kids. Lock the door. Don't be shy in there. I know you want some ice cream. 